Hi, I'm Renee Burke from Boone High School in Orlando. Today we're going to learn about a simple approach to great captions. Let's get started by looking at some photographs, which are a pivotal component in the caption writing process. Look at these amazing photos. Each one captures a moment. But I want more. I need details. Your yearbook readers want more. Now what's her story? What's she doing on a truck? Or what happened after he tackles this kid? Now look at this awesome photo. It captures a moment, right? It's definitely the type of photo that makes people stop and look. But we need to know more. Can you tell me her name? We can assume she's at a meet, but is it the first meet of the season? The state qualifier? How high did she even vault? Did she clear this? So even this outstanding shot leaves the viewer needing more. We need the story, or in other words, a caption. And not just any caption, but one that provides us with details so that we know the story now and in years to come. Captions provide the answers to our questions. They give readers information not only about what's happening in the photo, but what occurred before and or afterwards. So let's get started. First you'll need to know the four parts to a caption. They're as easy to remember as A, B, C, D. First is A, the attention getter. This is a mini headline that links the photograph to the caption. Next is B, or basic information. This is a present tense sentence that tells who and what is happening in the photo. Then C, or complementary info. This is a past tense sentence that tells us something we cannot see by looking at the photo itself, like a stat. Then D, a direct quote, that tells us a unique or specialized view from a person in the photograph. And just like when we write our other copy, we want our captions to be as accurate, complete, and informative as we can write them. What do I mean? Let's take a look at this shot. What do we need to know? Is she happy? Just won the point? How about the game? Or is she angry, upset with a teammate, or upset with the referee? Without a caption, we don't know the full story. And that photograph can be misinterpreted or misrepresented. So just like when you're writing a lead, try and cover the five W's and how. Captions are many stories. First we have the who. This is Chandler Dirk, who's a senior. The what? She's shouting. Where? Blue Valley East Invitational. When? Tuesday, September 5th. And why? She just won the first match of the season against Blue Valley East, the reigning state champ. How? Northwest won by three points. The final point was scored by Dirk, who slammed a spike. The quote. It was just one of those moments when time kind of slowed down. It all just happened in slow motion. And then wham, the ball was on the floor. Game over, we beat East. This information might be more than we need, or can even fit on the space provided. But we should collect it so that we can tell the whole story. If we don't have it, we can't use it. Now with this information, let's write a caption using the four-step process. First, we have the attention getter. Something like, take that. Next is B, the basic information. This is your first sentence. So you could write, at the Blue Valley East Invitational on September 5th, senior Chandler Dirk screams after spiking the ball and earning the final point of the game. This sentence describes what's happening, it identifies the person, and adds information that we can't see. Plus, it's in present tense. Now the third step, complementary information. The girls just won their first match of the season against Blue Valley East, the reigning state champ. That sentence adds more information, and it helps complete the story. Then you have the last step, D, the direct quote. It was just one of those moments when time kind of slowed down. It all just happened in slow motion. And then wham, the ball was on the floor. Game over, we beat East. Quotes help complete the story by capturing the thoughts of those who were part of the event. Here's our caption. Does it tell a story? Did it answer the five W's and H? Let's see. Who? What? When, where, why, and how. While this caption answered the five W's and H, that won't always be necessary. 
With each photo, you will have to determine what are the most important things to include when writing the caption. Sometimes we might not even be able to fit all this information in the space provided on our layouts. You can also consider swapping the complementary information and the direct quote. Consider this if it helps the caption flow. So where does all this information come from? A little research and interviewing. Much of the information should be fact. For example, if you know the date the photo was taken, you'll know the name of the opponent and you can look up the final score. Then you need to get the photo properly identified. The first person to ask, if you've already asked everyone in yearbook, is the coach. At that time, ask for team or player stats as well. And you might be able to find these online. Then, take five questions to the person so you can get the information you need. Ask open-ended questions so you get good answers. Verify spelling of names. Just think of all the ways you can spell Amy. Also, try and get your interview quickly after the event. That way emotions are still fresh. If you wait a month, you might just get something as lame as, it was cool. Now that you've learned the ABCDs of caption writing, let's discuss a few tips. Tip one, don't interpret. Keep your captions factual to what is actually happening. Avoid interpretation, what you think is happening. In this caption, fighting for first place at Braves Brawl, senior Taylor Moore shows her enthusiasm. Really? How do you know? Stick to writing about what you know is happening. Instead, maybe write this. As part of the senior Braves Brawl skit, Taylor Moore dives into the pool. Stick to the facts and let the quote add flavor to the caption. Tip two, identify people in the picture. Generally, identify the center of visual interest, those in the picture who are important to the telling of the story. For example, don't stick. In their food preparation and nutrition class, senior Jose Rodriguez stirs queso sauce as junior Nathaniel Pagan cooks an omelet. Sometimes that might not be as simple as it seems. Your editors will have to decide how many people you'll identify. Four, five, seven, or just the people in focus. Perhaps if there's too many people in the picture, you need to crop it tighter. But what do you do in this photo that has seven people you can see? If we crop out the players, it takes away from the action. One way might be able to make your description clear enough that everyone would know who you're identifying. Tip three, don't repeat information from the headline, secondary head, or caption lead-in. Like this, shocked. Annie Berlinski is shocked after hearing her name as the homecoming queen. Tip four, avoid leading a caption with a person's name. Instead of this, Got it. Sophomore Nick Tom jumps to keep the ball in bounds. Try this. To keep the ball in play, sophomore Nick Tom jumps to save it from going out of bounds. Tip five, quote should relate to the action in the photo. Wax on, wax off. At the French Honor Society car wash, senior Anna Marie Sebastiani dries off a car. I really like the French culture and I wanted to be a part of the Honor Society, Sebastiani said. The club raised $390.23 from the car wash. However, instead of writing that, maybe we should write something like, we worked really hard, but I hardly noticed because we had so much fun. When using quotes, make sure they're usable. Facts are not quotes. A quote should actually add some emotion to the caption that you're writing it for. Tip six, think about what happened before, during, and after the shutter closed. This adds details that will help tell the full story but it must relate. Know and report on those unseen details. Here's a caption for you. Swap. After raising the most money in the Kiss the Pig contest, junior Sarah Beth Harding kisses Petunia. I truly didn't mind kissing Petunia. She was too cute. Plus, it was for a good cause, Harding said. Harding raised 572.17 of the $2,809 collected. Tip seven, in sports. Tell the result of the game or play, as well as names of key opposing players. Nothing completes a sports caption better than giving details. The reader can't tell that this is a picture of a play that gave them the championship. You're out of there. In the district finals game, Jennifer Sharp tags out Robinson's Jacqueline Smith. It was so exciting to make the final out for us to win the championship. I didn't think this game was ever going to end, Sharp said. The Mustangs won 12-11 in 14 innings. So now let's recap. 
We have the attention getter, which is a fun, catchy link to the photograph. Then we have the basic information. That's a present tense sentence telling who and what is happening in the picture. Then we have our C, complementary information. This is a past tense telling us something that we cannot see. And then we have D, the direct quote that adds emotion to this caption. Now all you have to do is remember A, B, C, D, along with these seven tips and you're golden. You'll soon be writing captions that everyone wants to read. I hope this lesson has been helpful to you. Remember, there are lots of sources out there, but talk to your Walsworth representative. They're a fantastic resource and they're here to help you.